In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use negative painting to create a simple watercolour background. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle and on this channel we do all things watercolour as well as lots of drawing tutorials, even a little bit of mixed media and motivation for artists too. Please do consider subscribing, it's completely free and it really helps my channel to grow. Now in the past few weeks on YouTube I did two sort of um, single flower paintings. So I did one that was a succulent. I'll put some pictures up so that you can see while I'm talking. I did one that was a succulent and I did a yellow flower which I think is probably a primrose. It's such a close up. Perhaps you can tell me in the comments if I'm right about that. I'm not completely au fait with uh, all of the botanical names but it looked like a primrose to me. So we had these two flowers that I painted for you here on YouTube. The succulent rosette was um, a watercolour pencil painting and the yellow flower was in watercolour. Now I need to put backgrounds on these not only because it'll finish the painting but also because I've stretched the paper onto boards I need to take the paper off the boards and some of you of course have followed along with those tutorials and would like the backgrounds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you on the succulent we're going to do a simple wet into wet background and then I'm going to take that technique and move it forward and advance it so that we start with that same technique and on the yellow flower we move through to doing a negative painted technique. Now negative painting simply means painting round something in order to make it show up. In other words you might put a light colour on first and then put dark colour kind of in the gaps of the objects that you're doing. In this case it will be leaves. Now in other mediums like um, acrylics and oils you could possibly do it in reverse. You could do light around dark objects but that's not possible in watercolour. We need to work from light to dark. It's a great technique. It's one that I'm often asked about and honestly I do it in my paintings so often that I don't really think about it but this seems like a good opportunity to show you how it works. So let's get started. So let's start with this watercolour pencil painting and I'll leave that original video tutorial in the description of this video. Now because these were watercolour pencils I can't choose exactly the same colours but I've chosen some paint colours to make the background. This is overall fairly light so we're going to have a nice sort of dark moody background. One lighter colour I've got is this buttercup yellow that's from my floral set by Jackman's. A similar colour would be a cadmium yellow light or an aerolean. I've got some forest shadow here that's a very warm strong dark green that's from my shadow set. Another colour by the same manufacturer here. This is actually perylene black green shade. It might sound terrible to use black in a background but it's actually not black at all. It's a very very moody dark green. We're going to play around with these colours and we're going to make our wet into wet background. Now this particular florette has space all the way around it so there's no easy place to stop and start. There's a chance of getting a drying line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in one place and work round simultaneously keeping the leading edge wet. I'm not going to pre-wet the paper. That's just going to dilute the paint and make it harder to control. So we're actually going to work on dry paper, dropping wet colours into each other as we go. Now there are several ways of doing this. You can aim to have a very uneven background with lots of back runs and drying lines just for the effect of it. Or you can aim to have a smoother effect, which is what I'm going for today. You can never be 100% certain that you won't get some drying lines and some marks. Many of you are panicking far too much about these things because you can think of a background like this as just a starting point for more layers of paint. You can put a second layer in similar fashion on top. You could drop salt into it. You could add things like collage or paint dry on top. Or you could do what we're going to do today in the second painting, which is to use this as an underneath layer for some negative painting. So here's my green going on. I'm going to use some of this beautiful perylene black and you see that I'm trying to keep all of these edges wet at the same time. It's a little hard when I'm painting on YouTube because obviously I can't really very easily turn my uh, turn my board around and we're going to come along the edge like that. So the trick is try not to let any of these edges dry as you go backwards and forwards. Notice how I'm sweeping along the edge. What you don't want to do is be jabbing your brush towards a straight smooth edge because it's pretty hard that way to get a neat effect. So I'm going to come down here like this and use those dark edges to show up my painting. Adding in other colours when I want to. Let's pop some yellow up here. Do make sure you go fairly dark 
next to the object itself, providing, of course, it's a light object, as this one mostly is. If you had a dark object, you could go in behind with a light background. You might have an object that's got a bit of both, some areas light, some areas dark, and then you can vary what colors you're using in the background and what tones you're using in order to show the foreground object up the best. And I'll continue working around both sides at once like this until they meet up at the base. Now, if you're worried about going around the whole thing in one go like this, you could divide that background up with other objects, such as leaves and stems. In the original photograph, there's more than one floret. And the main thing is to keep this leading edge wet. Try to avoid puddles. Don't worry if you get a mistake or a slight drying line forming. The last thing you want to do is take a wet brush and go back to where you started, where it's damp. That will only make things worse. It's nearly always best to let things dry before you decide on the best way of fixing them. Remember, with your paintbrush, you want to sweep it along like this. You can probably see on camera there, I got one or two small splatters. All I'm going to do with those is blot them and leave them. They won't be noticeable at the end. If they were, I could go in and fix them, but I'd do that later on after they're dry. I do have other videos all about how to fix watercolor mistakes without making them worse. And here we are finished. I'll allow this to dry now and see if I want to make any further changes to it. As I said, a technique like this need only be the base layer to another technique. And in the next painting, we'll move this technique along. So next, let's advance that technique and go on to our yellow flower. First of all, let's have a look at the photograph that I used because we need to have a little bit of think about the order in which things are going to be painted and how light or how dark they are is going to inform us to the order in which we need to paint things. Now let's take a look at the original photograph. Now in the original photograph, almost all of the background is taken up by leaves. There's not much background and you can see the most contrast over here where we've got a slightly lighter leaf. But actually when you look at it in comparison to the yellow, it's still really a mid-tone. So nothing in the background is too pale. And then we've got some dark markings which we could describe really as the mid-tones of the painting and those are showing up some little crinkles on the leaves. And then we've got these dark negative shapes outside. I'm going to make a bit more of these. There's also in one or two places, some paler veins. We're going to simplify all of this. But what you want to do first of all is just identify really three tones. So you're looking at lights, mid-tones and darks. And by light, mid-tones and dark, I mean comparatively speaking for the area that you're working in. As I said, the light here, when compared with a very light, like the yellow, is not really that light at all. So all of the background is dark, but you can see the areas are lighter, mid-tones and darker, and that's what we'll be working on. If you're enjoying this video, can I ask you please quickly, could you just press the like button before we get back to the painting and the drawing? Could you just press that thumbs up for me, leaving me a comment, subscribing or sharing these videos also really helps me out. It takes many, many hours, sometimes even full days to create free videos such as this to help you to learn. And all of those things I mentioned are easy ways that you can help to support my channel. So now let's get started in painting our first layer, the one that's going to end up being the leaves. I'm just gonna show you this very briefly because it's exactly the same method I used in the first painting. So we'll skip ahead quite quickly. So I've got some colors here. I'll list all of the colors in the video description so you can look them up there. I've got the original yellow that we used to paint the flower with because as far as possible, it's a good idea to stick to the same limited palette in the background as in the foreground. Now, the actual green that we used was a watercolor pencil, so I can't match that. I've got some viridian here, but it's a true viridian. So it's not um, a phthalo green that's been mislabeled. So it'll be a bit more muted. It's a very blue green. And I've got a touch of Payne's gray here. Might put some more of that out later on. I wouldn't usually advise darkening things with grays and blacks, but Payne's gray is actually majority blue pigment and it works to darken and dull down greens very effectively. Now, because this painting has far less gap here, I can start with this little area here. And I'm actually going to start this time by adding a little bit of clean water. 
and I'm not even worried if there ends up being a drying line because we can just cover it up later on with the leaves as we put our other layers on. Now negative painting can be done so simply you can just do you know a light flat wash followed by a dark flat wash but I like wherever possible to find the opportunity just to vary my colours a little bit. Not only is it easier than a flat wash but it's going to make any subsequent layers just that little bit more interesting. I don't want to go too bright and vibrant here because that would just take away from the original flower and I'm going to continue working all the way round. And just to show you how I finished this off, I'm back round to the beginning here and I'm going to rinse my brush and dry it slightly and then I'm just going to drag in from the other side. And we've got a few minor imperfections, but overall I'm very happy with this application. You'll notice that so far I haven't done any drawing. That's because I didn't want the pencil to get trapped underneath the bottom layer. It's always good to do the drawing as late on as you can. So let's sort that out next. I'm just going to be using the photograph as sort of inspiration because it's very hard to see the background. Some of it's blurry and the leaves take up almost all of it. So we're going to use areas like this as sort of inspiration. I'm just going to think about where I want things to sit. Of course, you can also use this process to kind of um, cover up any areas that didn't come out as you liked on that first application of paint. There aren't any areas that I'm particularly unhappy with. Most of them, even though they show, are fairly innocuous. But nevertheless, any layered technique like this is a good opportunity to cover up any things you don't want showing. I'm going to get on and draw a few more leaves. Now this next step is kind of optional because you could just keep this in uh, two tones, two completely flat colours or two layers of wet into wet colours. But I'd like to put a little bit of my details on the leaves. Now you could do this last. I prefer to stick working light to dark because that way any mistakes that I make, perhaps I go outside of one of the leaves by accident, I'll be able to clean that up when we do our negative painting. So you can see my drawing. I've put a few random leaves in. Now notice I've put some centre lines in that's going to assist me with this next layer of painting. And also I've been careful that none of these centre lines head straight out of a corner. That's a very bad thing to do from a composition point of view. I've also got the leaves going off in multiple places, going off the edge of the area. It's fine to have leaves that go outside of the area, but you don't want just one of them to be doing that. Otherwise, it can tend to make it look like everything's stuck on one edge of the paper. So from a composition point of view, I'm happy with it. So we're going to put those very strong darks, that negative painting in between. But before we do that, I want to work a bit more on these leaves with some mid-tones, get a bit more detail on them. The amount of layers and complication you add to this is really up to you. And what I'm going to do is start by putting some clean water on the inside of this leaf here. I'm being careful not to go too close to the edge and only going up just before that centre line. Now I just want some colour that's a little bit darker and I'm just going to go here so that we get a bit of an idea of a centre to this and I'm just going to take some fairly thick paint around like so. I'm going to take it right up to the edge of this flower. The darker we can go next to the edge of this light flower, the more interesting our painting is going to look. And I'm going to use this technique on all of my leaves to give them a bit more definition. Don't expect them to show up too well at this point because everything is going to come together once we put the next layer of darks in. So it's time now to do the exciting bit. We're going to do the negative painting, paint in between the leaves to make them show up. Now, it's important to know that at each stage of this, I allowed things to get completely dry. We're going to paint these background areas. So this is where we do our negative painting and we allow these lighter leaves to show through. Oh my goodness, there's another cat hair. So many cat hairs today. I don't even know. I'll get that off in a minute. I think he just must be molting. He's crazy because we've got snow forecast. Right, so I'm going to do this background as a flat wash, but 
it doesn't have to be a flat wash so remember that any of these layers you can do them as flat washes you can do them with sharp edges you can adjust them how you want but I could also do this background layer also as wet into wet as long as I went much more tonally dark then my leaves would still show up but just to show you how to do it I'm going to do this as a flat wash so what I need to do first of all is to mix up enough paint to do all of these areas because I want them to be flat and I want them all to look the same color if I just mix up a little bit in my palette I'll find that I get a difference from here to here and that's not what I'm going for on this occasion so I'm going to get a separate dish like this start off with clean water I'm going to dump a load of my green in and then I'm just going to darken it with some Payne's Grey I'll probably need to squeeze a bit more of that out and probably as well I'll add some yellow in so that we get a strong warm dark green once you've got your color mixed up and you've got plenty of it you can do a little swatch on a piece of paper see if it's dark enough and then we're going to apply now if you find after you've applied it and it's dried it's not dark enough don't worry just put another layer on I'm going to start down the bottom here and we're just going to apply you want to use as large a brush as you can manage so that may mean swapping between small and large brushes as you go across your painting and again I'm going to use that pointed end of my brush just to come round you see we've got a little mark here I don't know if you can see it this background will completely tidy that up and we're making those shapes appear now with the brush I can even if I feel it's necessary actually change the shape of these petals I could for example make the edge of this flower a bit more wiggly and you see what a beautiful smooth result we get and as I continue round the painting the leaves that I put in that are not very defined at the moment will begin to appear and I hope you can see now how these lovely leaves are starting to really show up as I work my way around the painting trying very hard here I would much prefer to have my board turned round and my face about an inch from my work because I'm very short-sighted but um, we struggle on trying to keep my hand in a position where you can see what I'm doing I've just got one more area to paint down here remember when you paint these you need to go from one side to the other smoothly and evenly don't dot around and don't outline the flower first because you'll end up getting drying lines if you do get any minor drying lines and this area here is not yet dry so we need to wait and see what that looks like but if you get any minor drying lines you're not happy you can always put another coat of paint on top so do let me know in the comments if you've had a go at negative painting before or perhaps you're going to have a go at this I'll leave the links to both of the full tutorials in the description of this video so if you want to find those tutorials they're both free they're both available on YouTube I'll leave the links in the description and before you leave this video don't forget to check out that video description because I've got lots of free stuff in there for you I've got some free downloadable PDFs there's even some free online courses that you can take and if you enjoyed this tutorial but perhaps you have a few difficulties with your flower drawing you'll enjoy my recent video on 16 flower drawing mistakes you can watch that video right now